Hi everyone, I'm Gamefish and in this video I will be giving you 5 essential tips for Star Wars Battlefront survival that will make beating even the hardest difficulty a lot easier. It doesn't matter if you are a beginner or a more advanced player at this game, everybody watching should be able to implement these tips into their own survival strategies. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Starting off, the first tip that really helped me out a lot is using the right weapon. For survival, I found that to be the TL-50 Heavy Repeater. This weapon is a light machine gun with a secondary fire option. If you hold down your left trigger and then shoot, you fire an energy blast, dealing a ton of splash damage. Not only is this very effective against hordes of regular stormtroopers, but this secondary fire option also gives you the ability to kill jump troopers when their shields are up. You will have to hit them right on their bodies, but this isn't too difficult since the projectile is pretty large. Once you fired the energy blast though, your weapon instantly overheats. So you will have to be careful using this as to not get overrun by large groups of enemies. This blaster's high rate of fire means its regular damage output is pretty high as well. Not being able to aim down sides because of the secondary fire option means it's not as effective at a longer range, but once you get used to it, it's a very effective weapon. Moving on to tip number 2. When picking your weapon, you'll also need to choose your hand, which allows you to use certain items and abilities. If you're like me and you have not played a lot of online while it was still popular, you are pretty much restricted to the hands the game gives you. Fortunately, these hands are decent enough if you know which one to pick. My suggestion would be to always pick the hand that deals the most damage to vehicles. ATSTs and TIE Fighters are some of the most annoying enemies in the game, so if you have the option to choose an ion weapon, so the torpedo or the grenade, you should definitely pick that hand. Ice Caves and Rebel Depot don't give you the option to pick ion weapons, since you're just dealing with TIEs on the former and with not even a single vehicle on the latter, so for these maps I would recommend the hands that deal the most splash damage to regular enemies. The third tip I've got for you is to make use of certain cheat spots. These are some spots you can sit in while firing at vehicular enemies without them being able to shoot back. From what I know, all maps except Tatooine and Hoth have spots like this. If you play on Sullust or Endor, you can sit under the Imperial Transporters that are located inside the hangar on Sullust and on the spawn hill on Endor. Sitting here while the ATSTs are close by, make sure they cannot hit you while you can hit their feet. This way you can easily destroy them without taking any damage. When you are playing on ice caves, there's a certain spot from where you can easily hit TIE Fighters and quickly take cover again. If you place yourself at this entrance to the caves, the TIEs will dive to you from multiple directions, but they will pretty much always be in your sights. If you do take any damage, you can quickly go back into the cave to take cover, which makes it a breeze to shoot down the TIEs. By far the most obvious and most game-breaking cheat spot in the game is the top of the Millennium Falcon on Rebel Depot. If you sit in the middle of the Falcon, you can't be hit by any enemies except the jump troopers. If you choose the Grenadier Hand, you can also use a personal shield, making it a lot easier to not take any damage. Using this spot will probably make sure you'll win without even a single death. Tip number 4 is to not always go for pods right when they spawn. Every 3 rounds in survival, a pod containing powerful items and weapons spawns. Now you can choose to always go for these pods right when they spawn, but I've noticed this results in death most of the times if you're playing on either hard or master difficulty. The risk you take by directly going to these pods is just not worth it. Instead, I would advise to either not go for the pods at all, you don't really need them anyway when playing on maps like Rebel Depot and Ice Caves, or to just leave one trooper alive during your next wave and then go for the pod. This way you won't risk dying and you'll still get the items. The best enemies to keep alive while using this strategy are the probe droids. Regular troopers can capture the pods back if they manage to reach it. But with probe droids you don't have to worry about this since they can take back the pods. My fifth and final tip for you guys is by far the most important one there is. This will make completing survival at least twice as easy. It may sound too good to be true, but I can promise you it's not. And this tip is to play with a friend. When playing with a friend you basically have the amount of enemies you have to kill because you fight the same amount of enemies in either solo or co-op. It's also a lot easier to target ADSTs, since one of you can distract it while the other one is taking the shots. Furthermore, if one of you dies the other one can still finish the wave. Once the other finishes, you can spawn again without having to spend a heart making the no-death challenges a piece of cake. 
Other than that, it's just a lot more fun playing with a friend than playing alone. I've had such good laughs while playing with one of my friends, and it's always a blast playing together. But what if I don't have any friends? Well, then I guess you'll just have to settle for the first four tips. Anyway, those were all the tips I've got for you to make survival a lot easier to complete. If you would like to see how these tips play out in practice, you should check out the video on screen now. If you've enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you'd subscribe to the channel and leave a like on this video. Also be sure to leave a comment if any of these tips work for you or if there are any tips that I've missed. Then I really want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.